I decided based on that conversation, instead of using various different compounds, why don't I ramp up the dose of testosterone over time and see where I feel best? And that sweet spot of eight ampules Bayer testosterone per week is certainly where it's at. I literally felt like a god. Vigor, Steve here. I got another story for you guys. Let's talk about that time. I ran 2,000 milligrams of testosterone anti per week and somehow didn't die. If he dies, he dies, right? Well, at that time, that didn't apply to me. I'm still around kicking and chewing bubblegum here and there. This cycle had a couple different iterations. You know, I would usually ramp up the dose of testosterone anti starting with 250 milligrams and ending up somewhere between 1,500 milligrams up to 2,000 milligrams, which is the cycle we're going to discuss in this video. That's from 2018. And when I say 2,000 milligrams, guys, you know, running Bayer Testovarin or Rotex Medica Testovarin, those ampules are overfilled. So actually, when you do the calculations, you get between 1.1 to 1.3 milliliters per one single ampule. And even though the concentration is still 250 milligrams per one milliliter, if you're getting more milliliters out of a single ampule, that means my actual cycle might have been 2,500 milligrams testosterone anodate per week. And at other times, when I was running high dose test cycles, so let's say one ampule of testovarin per day, one amp of test per day keeps the doctor at bay, if only, right? 1,750 milligrams weekly, but in reality, that's almost 2,200 milligrams weekly if you go by the actual content of a single ampule of Bayer or Rotex Medica test of iron being overfilled. And when I was running 1,500 milligrams, in reality, I was running close to 1,900 milligrams testosterone antidote per week. So um, if my dosing parameters are slightly off and the blood work results represent that, or the results that you'll see on screen from the progress pictures which I, which I took around the time that I took my blood work results as well, um, then you know exactly why. Again, pharmaceutical grade test of irons are generally overfilled. So you get exactly what you pay for. If you think it's highly expensive, well, that's because you get more. Instead of four milliliters, you probably get five milliliters out of it, which is probably two thirds of a vial of um, underground lab testosterone antate, which is probably also underdosed. But before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to join the weekly Vigors Q&A, which is always on Saturday, we have a private Q&A for about an hour, hour and a half. If you want to join that one before the general population tries to get their questions in, you can join the YouTube or Patreon memberships with a 100% chance that you can get your questions answered. And otherwise, you can vote for upcoming deep dives and decide which deep dive I'm going to produce next, which is now going to be released over several parts because they're so deep that it requires hours just to get the content out. Okay, let's get started with this 2,000 milligrams or let's say 2,500 milligram testosterone cycle that I did in 2018. Again, I was ramping up the dosages nice and slow. I started with 250 milligrams per week to get the most results out of it. As I was bulking to gain a little bit of size, I think I ended up around 110, 115 kilograms, uh, nice and fluffy, so no pictures there. And then um, I think I ended up around 1,000 milligrams of testosterone antidote per week when I finished my off season. And then as the calories came down, the dosage of testosterone came up with a couple different increments. So I was ending my off season with four ampules of bare testosterone per week. So let's say that's actually 1,250 milligrams testosterone antidote per week, but over four injections, one amp Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And then what I did in the next increment, added in another ampule on Saturday. So I had five ampules per week. And then the next increment was six ampules per week. And then I went straight to 2000 milligrams, close to the time I was starting to prepare for this photo shoot. This is when I did blood work, the blood work parameters, the blood work results that we're going to discuss shortly. Now, what else was I running at the time for full transparency? Actually, I kept it very simple. I was running the cookie cutter supplementation stack citrus bergamot to keep my lipids in range. I didn't know about azetamibe at all. That wasn't really a thing. I didn't use a statin. I didn't use anything else. I used citrus bergamot, 1,000 milligrams per day, 500 milligrams berberine per day. I was on a ketogenic diet with healthy fats only and fish oil with every meal. I was doing two workouts per day, morning and evening. I was doing cardio once per day and posing practice once per day. So I was very physically active. I took, I think, 6,000 milligrams astragalus root extract to help with kidney function. Um, I didn't take any creatine monohydrate at the time. I think my supplementation was very, very simple. And the only thing that I used 
to keep my blood pressure in range was 10 milligrams Cialis every single day pre-workout, the first workout of the day, because again, it has a long active life, so you don't need to dose that twice. The pumps that you get in the evening from a morning dose of Cialis are still there, and my blood pressure stayed in range quite well. I think I was up to five milligrams Cialis when I was running four ampules or five ampules of Testovirin per week, and then when I increased it to five or six ampules, I think I had a little bit of an issue with my blood pressure, so I increased it the 10 milligram Cialis. And the main reason is because I always got weird side effects, like a little bit of a dry cough from the lisinopril and telmisartan, again, <laughs> wasn't a thing. Nobody talked about telmisartan. That's only been around or at least been advocated for the last three or four years. And we're talking about a cycle that I did five years ago. So at the time, the knowledge wasn't as um, super physiological as it is now. And of course, over time, practices and recommendations and ancillaries certainly change. Now, I will say, <laughs> that this was probably the best cycle I've ever done. And I got to this idea from Aaron Reed, one of the tallest bodybuilders on the planet. He's worked very closely with Ryan Reynolds on various movies. The latest one, I believe, was Free Guy, where he plays Dude. So you have Guy against Dude, and Dude basically has the face of Ryan Reynolds. But that body was from Aaron Reed, one of the tallest bodybuilders and the most jacked guys I've ever met in my life. When he was in Thailand in, I think, 2017 or maybe early 2018, uh, we had an off-camera conversation about particular practices. I'll leave that conversation between Aaron and myself. Right? He's uh, famous now, so we're not going to go into details. But I decided based on that conversation, instead of using various different compounds, why don't I ramp up the dose of testosterone over time and see where I feel best? And that sweet spot of eight ampules Bayer testosterone per week is certainly where it's at. I literally felt like a god. Really. And of course, on Tremblo and Acetate, you feel like a god too, but you have this perpetual rain cloud above your head and you're always annoyed and irritated and maybe a little bit jealous or you have sexual deviancy and all kinds of side effects that you think you can tolerate, but actually in reality, you really can't because you're literally a total dickhead. So um, the Tremblo sandwich was long out of my system by the time on my wife's request, but a dose, a hefty dose between 2000 to 2500 milligrams testosterone anatate per week. I had no side effects. Really, my blood work parameters, as you'll see after this, are actually quite good. I'm just running this protocol of tests, aromacin, growth hormone, and a couple of ancillaries in the form of over-the-counter supplements, albeit that Cialis isn't exactly over-the-counter, um, unless you live in Thailand where you can literally buy Cialis over-the-counter, no prescription required. So it was a very simple cycle, and the results speak for themselves. I felt great. I was highly energetic. I didn't use, need to use copious amounts of fat burners. If anything, I took maybe a little bit of clenbuterol at certain periods. But, you know, when you train twice per day and you do daily fasted cardio and posing practice because you want to hit your shots properly when you do your photo shoot, then it wasn't really required. I didn't take injectable carnitine. wasn't available to me. I probably took oral L-carnitine, L-tartrate with every single meal, right? Maybe at 3,000 milligrams in total. So, you know, due to availability and knowledge five years ago, the cycle was a lot simpler and still to this day, one of the best cycles I've ever done. I was happy, go lucky, easy to be around, easy to talk to, always approachable while I was dieting my socks off, doing that much cardio and that much workouts and that much posing practice every single day of the week. Well, I took Sunday off, but I was literally doing two days, six days a week. I felt like I was unbreakable. And honestly, guys, everything that I learned during these high-dose test cycles, experimenting with various dosages of testosterone and growth hormone and insulin and IGF-1 and figuring out the optimal dose of aromacin to keep serum estradiol levels favorable for overall anabolism but not get too into, into this territory where you get gyno or water retention or terrible acne, right? I learned everything during this time of experimenting with bioidentical hormones. This is one of the cycles where I learned a lot and with consecutive cycles, I kind of formulated the plan which resulted in those ebooks, right? You can find them on my website and I'll link them down below in case you're interested. And otherwise, don't take it from me, just take it from Chase Irons and probably a good idea to get him on a podcast reasonably soon just to talk about his protocol and his experience running such a high dose of testosterone and pharmaceutical grade growth hormone alongside of it because he's literally mutating, mutating in front of our eyes. Yeah, so my current cycle is 3,000 testosterone enanthate, 1,000 mastron enanthate, and 18 IUs of serostim 
every single day, dosed one time at night. The reason that I'm taking my testosterone levels up so high is to take maximum advantage of the 18 IUs of pharmacy growth hormone that I'm taking. I've been on 3,000 milligrams of tests for the last three weeks now, and I've titrated up to this dose. I've been over 2,000 milligrams of tests for about the past two months. So I moved from 2,000 tests to 2,500 tests to 3,000. I've noticed that the more tests that I use, the greater my pumps are, the greater my fullness is, the more thick that I'm looking. I've also noticed that my insulin sensitivity has improved greatly to the point where if I eat a meal that has 200 grams of carbs in it and extremely low fat, an hour later my blood sugar is gonna be 85. And that's even on 18 IUs of growth hormone a day. The reason that I have Masteron in there at 1,000 milligrams a week is to help control estrogen just a little bit. The last time that I got blood work, I was on 2,000 tests, 800 Masteron, and my estrogen was 65. I'll be getting blood work on three grams of test and one gram of mast here pretty soon to see where my estrogen levels are and my total testosterone and all of that is. So far, progress has been excellent. I'm currently weighing about 269, 271. This is the heaviest that I have ever been at this body fat percentage. When I started this cycle back in February, I was weighing about 240 pounds and my body fat percentage was definitely much higher than it is right now. So yeah, that's the current cycle. I feel great. I'm gonna keep monitoring my blood work. I'm gonna continue to monitor my blood pressure. So far, everything's sitting A-OK, -okay, but if things do change, I will back off the dose. I'm getting a little bit jealous, Chase. You mother... When my wife is pregnant, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Stay tuned. Okay, so long story short, and it might sound like a little bit of a sales pitch, but bear with me. I felt good. I looked good. My blood work was great. All things considering, right? It's never going to be perfect being on that much steroids and growth hormone and ancillary and whatnot, but it was still pretty freaking good compared to all of the other blood work results which I've gotten in my life for comparable dosages running steroids in combination. And recovery was wolverine-like. I was not taking TB500, I was not taking BPC157 or uh, GHK copper or ARA290, just tests and GH. I couldn't get sore. <laughs> and I could train twice a day, six days a week, taking one day off to kind of you know spend time with my wife. But if I wanted to, I, I think I could have trained twice per day, every single day for months in duration. I took a deload every eight weeks, preventatively during these couple of months that I was ramping up the testosterone dose, but I never felt overtrained. You know, a couple of times I took an extra day off. So instead of training six days a week, I trained five days a week, whoop de doo or maybe sometimes I didn't feel like going to the gym in the evening and I would skip that workout. But man, I felt indestructible, no injuries, no, no tendon problems, no issues with my knees or elbows or chest. Everything ran so smoothly. And I, now looking back on it, I wonder why I ever changed. Honestly, so um, even though a, a cycle of test and primo is still a quite nice cycle, I'll be honest about that. So, and I was five years younger, so, you know, wear and tear on the joints and the overall stressors in life, of course, that's going to accumulate. So um, it might sound like a silk pitch, but again, it's one of the best cycles I've ever done. And, um, you know, looking around me with the uh, guys that are running similar protocols, again, most of them are in good state of health, good mental state, very happy, go lucky and not anywhere trend-like. And while the physiques of the people running such a high dose or at least admitted it to me, those physiques kind of speak for themselves. So let's go over to the blood work results. We'll discuss them briefly, otherwise this is going to turn into a very lengthy video. We'll look at the complete blood count. You see that my omaticrit was 48%, so it's not anywhere alarming, just like you would see on a dose of, let's say, a gram of test and a gram of Primo or Boldenone. You would get an omaticrit of, let's say, 52, 54, 56% with high red blood cell count as well. White blood cell count was not abysmally low, like you usually see with DHT derivatives or progestogenic 19 nors, like primabolin, masterone, trembolone, or mint, or nandrolone. And all the other complete blood count parameters were perfectly normal as well. Moving over to the urinalysis, specific gravity was low. Again, I was going hydrated for my blood work. And again, nothing really to see here. All of the other urinalysis results fall within normal parameters. Then we have the blood chemistry. Blood glucose was only 68 milligrams per deciliter. Now, I'm pretty sure I wasn't running Lantus at the time. I ran that with consecutive cycles, but not at the end of 2018. Um, so again, I was on a ketogenic diet, training twice per day, doing cardio, and um, a lot of pausing practice. So maybe that's the reason why my blood glucose is low. And otherwise, it's because I took 500 milligrams of berberine before bed. 
Blood urea and nitrogen is not surprisingly high, only 18.1 milligrams per deciliter, even though my protein intake at the time was, let's say, 300 to 350 grams per day. You see that my serum creatinine is a little bit elevated, 1.49 milligrams per deciliter, which is be, to be expected when you're training twice per day and you have a significant amount of muscle mass on your frame. Uric acid fall within normal parameters, creatine phosphokinase 3300. Again, training two times per day and taking maybe a little bit of clenbuterol at that time. I can't exactly find my notes. If it was taking clenbuterol at the time, it wouldn't surprise me. But if anything, it was probably a low dose of 20 micrograms per day, which is also known to increase your CPK levels. But it's probably from doing so much work in the gym every single day of the week. C-reactive protein with, let's say, 9 milliliters or maybe 9.5 milliliters of castor oil and benzyl benzoate and benzyl alcohol on a weekly basis. C-reactive protein is only 1.7 milligrams per liter. Gamma GT levels, nice and low, so there's no um, indication of issues with my liver. And also not running a zetamibe or, you know, the basic over-the-counter cookie cutter ways to control your cholesterol levels. Total cholesterol, 185 milligrams per deciliter, HDL 51. On two and a half grams of steroids, an HDL 51. Then you guys are poop-pooping on a high-dose test cycle. Again, an HDL of 51 milligrams per deciliter and an LDL of 118 milligrams per deciliter. You would never, ever, ever in your life see an HDL and LDL on a similar cycle consisting of testosterone, mastron, primo, winstrol, anivar, trimbalone, nandrolone, ever. Even with the Zetamine, your HDL will be 20, if not lower. So again, for all of the guys that were on a cycle like this, Look at the blood work results. My blood work results don't lie. My lipids are almost perfect. My lipids are representative of a guy that's running TRT, TRT plus. And my C-reactive protein is, uh, even though it's higher than I would like it to have it, I prefer 0.5 milligrams per liter. It's still quite favorable on a high sensitivity test. So no systemic inflammation and no risk for cardiovascular disease as proven with my CT scan a couple of years later, where I had a calcium score zero. So liver function tests, I'm not running any oral steroids. All of my liver function uh, results are within normal parameters, except for the liver enzymes, the AST and ALT. And that's because I was training twice per day. And these transaminases, these amino transferases, are also found in skeletal muscle, like I mentioned a million times before. So I wasn't running any Tutka. I was running NAC, 2,000 milligrams per day. But I was not running any Tatka at that time because, uh, again, it wasn't available to me in Thailand. And importation up until the last couple of years was quite difficult when it comes to particular over-the-counter supplements that weren't sold on iHerb or, let's say, bodybuilding.com. And that brings us to the hormone results. Look at that free testosterone, baby. It's off the scale. And that's to be expected with conventional testing at Bria Labs. You can't get a higher level than the testing equipment allows it for, and we don't have liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry testing available here in Thailand, and that wasn't really discussed five years ago. So free testosterone, 119 or over 119 nanograms per deciliter, and total testosterone over 3,460.8 nanograms per deciliter, even though they say 34.608 nanograms per milliliter here. Easy conversion, just multiplied with 100. So um, these levels are off the scale, which is to be expected. Um, again, I would have loved to see a liquid chromatography, tandem mass spectrometry, high sensitivity test for free testosterone and total testosterone, but um, maybe I'll have to run this much and then go um, visit Merrick Health in the United States and uh, tell them that I had an accident injecting that much testosterone. It's certainly not TRT approved. Venom B12 was uh, slightly out of the reference range, which is probably due to a B100 complex that I was supplementing with. And you see that on this uh, eight ampules of Bayer Testoviron and eight tablets of Pfizer Eximustain Aromacin, my serum ester dial is um, favorable, I would say, 55 picograms per milliliter. Not alarmingly high, but not low to the point your lipids get affected and your sex hormone binding globulin get affected. And you see by the sex hormone binding globulin results, 30 nanomoles per liter. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. My libido was great and if i didn't train that much uh, my wife would have been worn out um were we married at that yes we, we certainly were we certainly were married at the time i would have worn her out if i didn't go to the gym that much twice per day because i was 
brimming with energy. Progesterone is uh, 0.22 nanograms per milliliter. That's been declining over the last couple of years. I didn't check my DHEA sulfate at that time because this was around the time that I started experimenting with DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation. And with consecutive cycles, I started adding that in. Prolactin was a little bit on the low side, but not alarmingly low. You see that my hemoglobin A1C, the glycolated hemoglobin is nice and low, only 4.5% indicating very good glucose homeostasis, very good glucose management within my bloodstream following a ketogenic diet and doing daily fasted cardio, two workouts per day, and posing practice and taking a little bit of berberine before bed. Uh, growth hormone levels, not administering any exogenous growth hormone the day before or the day of doing blood work results. 4.35 nanograms per milliliter. So that's the growth hormone that I produced endogenously. And IGF-1 also probably coming from endogenous uh, stimulation from the endogenous growth hormone, 230 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, it might've been higher on the days that I would actually administer exogenous growth hormone for I use per day. Now, I'll be the first one to say that this blood work result isn't as uh, inclusive as the recent results, which I've been taking over the last couple of years, right? There's no cystatin C, but based on my latest cystatin C results uh, for my kidney function, I would say that at this time, cystatin C was also nicely in range. There's no um, uh, lipoprotein, like lipoprotein little a or APOB or APOA uh, markers in this blood work results, but based on my the total cholesterol levels and HDL and LDL, I suspect that those are pretty much in range as well. Of course, there's a lot more room for cancer markers and uh, heavy metals in the bloodstream and serum electrolytes and all that good stuff. But again, you know, I would do my blood work quite frequently on these high dose test cycles. And I didn't see any reason um, based on previous results to test those as frequently. These blood work results, again, are better than consecutive cycles I've done that have been a lot more complicated. Let's look at how it looked that time. Now, unfortunately, the pictures that I took exactly on this blood work results, I no longer have. Again, I was storing them on only one external hard disk, which um, now I can't seem to repair because it dropped on the floor. And again, guys, I've sent it to a multitude of different uh, services here in Thailand, but I'll bring it to the United States when I go there. Maybe I'll have better luck recovering my data. I do have some uh, pictures from a month later after I dropped from 2,000 milligrams or 8 ampules of uh, Bayer Testovirin down to only 6. So around uh, 1,500 to 1,800 milligrams per week, and then supplementing with a 90 milligrams oral winstrol on top. Basically a week or a couple of days before the show, photo shoot, I ended up looking like this. So if you can um, add a couple pounds of extra fat mass and a little bit more water retention and less of this uh, dyed hair that I had at that time, that's pretty much what I looked like. But these pictures are from the time that I was on test plus oral winstrol. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure the blood work results, which I took around the time I took these pictures, those results are actually horrendous, right? I was on Winstrol, so my lipids were all skewed, and my liver enzymes were certainly a lot more elevated than my HCHBG was probably bottomed out. But we're talking about this two gram test cycle, but I don't have pictures of it. So we'll take these pictures, but you'll have to add a couple pounds, a little bit more water retention, and less detail because I was only on test and about a month out, still um, having a lot more body fat at that time. Still, I think I look pretty damn good around this time. And, you know, my lats and, and all these body parts, my quads, everything was flaring, everything was separated, everything was full as a house. I mean, look at this back, dude. I mean, I missed this. Honestly, look at this. And I wish I could get it back. I was a lot of work. I probably wouldn't be able to work and produce videos for you guys training that much and being that, you know, depleted for such a long time. And even though I'm not really in stage condition, even looking like this, takes a tremendous amount of work and it does detract from the overall productivity. So I don't think I'll ever accomplish a look like this ever again. But, you know, running a cycle in comparison to something similar, um, I wouldn't be opposed to it, assuming that I'm in a good state of health and stay in a good state of health. Look at this back, dude. Look at that haircut also, man. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so these are the pictures of that time. I ended up looking a little bit better for a photo shoot I did a couple of days later. Of course, I took a little bit of diuretic and I manipulated my carbohydrates and my sodium and then perhaps taking a little bit of anadrol and maybe even some superdrol for the carb loading process. So I probably looked a little bit better, but these are the best pictures that I have as close at the time of the blood work when I was still on eight ampules of Bayer Testovirin per week. 
Um, even though at that time, again, I looked a little bit more fluffy and watery, and I was a little bit heavier than these exact pictures. All right. I hope this story was informative. Again, I have the blood work and the pictures to back it up, um, that this cycle was a huge success. And even though it sounds very, very simple, and even though a lot of educators are apparently against a high-dose test cycle, everybody that I talk to that have been in the field has competed or has done crazy stuff with their physique to the point it's highly impressive and they're still healthy. Most of those guys prefer high test. Most of those guys prefer high test. I'll leave it here. Food for thought. I'm not trying to promote high test, but this is the way it is. All of the guys that are freaks, high test. High test, high test, high test, high test. Okay. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. My sponsors, my affiliates, they're all there. And otherwise, they're on my website, vigorsteve.com. Bookmark that site and have a look at those ebooks in case you're interested in running cycles with bioidentical hormones only. Those ebooks are on my website in the shop section and in the article section. I get a ton of articles for free. So bookmark that site, do yourself a favor and start reading for free besides all of the free videos that I have here on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Not anywhere close to the time. I took eight apps of tests per week, but I'm holding on for dear life and doing my absolute best to stay somewhat presentable. Stay tuned. You never know when my wife is pregnant and I pull the plug on a similar cycle like this. Um, and then let's see where we end up, you know? Chase, I'm mad jealous, but I'm happy for you that you're running such a crazy cycle. We should discuss this very, very soon. For now, we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.